Hello everybody. I hope you had a good week. Uh, today, uh, this video is a response to a question from Terry. Uh, it's a month old. Unfortunately, I was so busy I couldn't respond to him uh, in time. Uh, so Terry asks, uh, how do we draw multi-start threads? And he wants to know how we do it for internal and external threads. In order to do that, uh, I, I need to give some uh, more information uh, for other people so we could put Terry's question into context. Uh, so for us to be able to have the background information, uh, we need to see uh, properties of uh, threads. And uh, after we have those properties on the back of our head, we shall know what uh, Terry means by uh, multi-start threads. So uh, threads have about seven properties. Uh, that's agenda, designation, handedness, page, profile, surface shape, and start. Remember, Terry's question was going to fall in the category of start and gender. Uh, what we have under gender, it's actually internal or external threads. And these threads have a designation of either uh, motion uh, threads, mainly used, let's say, in CNC machines, uh, ceiling threads, uh, fastening threads, the ones we know as fasteners, or connection threads. And then handedness, uh, either the spiral of the thread is left hand uh, or right hand or clockwise or anti-clockwise and then pitch we have what we call cost pitch and then fine pitch this just is a result of how many threads do we have per inch or millimeter and then a profile uh, we have square uh, threads again square threads mainly used in cnc uh, scalene triangular round or trapezoidal kind of profile and then uh, surface uh, we have cylindrical or conical in our example uh, while we're answering Terry's question we shall draw cylindrical threads now that we have a background of uh, Terry's question we know his question falls under start and gender so multi start thread and then internal or external now that we have that background information, uh, this is how the thread will look like if it's a multi start. If we only had the green spiral, that would be a single start thread. Uh, in this screenshot, we are having two spirals uh, on the thread, uh, which creates a multi start thread. So, multi start threads are threads that have two or more uh, thread spirals. Okay, so now that we have that uh, defined, uh, before we go ahead and free card and start drawing uh, these threads, uh, we need to know the dimensions we are going to use. Uh, so this is a, a basic uh, dimension of uh, an ISO thread. Uh, we have the D, which is the major diameter, and then we have minor diameter, and then we have uh, the pitch, which is uh, P, and then we have H, which is the height of the thread, and then we have the angle. In most cases, that is 60 degrees, but that is going to always depend on the profile of the thread you're going to draw. Some have 30, uh, so all that was going to depend. But in our example, shall be using uh, 60 degrees. And if the tooth is facing inward or outward of the cylinder, uh, that becomes either an internal thread, if it's the th uh, this tooth is inside, an external thread, if that tooth is uh, facing outside of the cylinder you're going to draw for the thread. Now that we have our dimensions uh, defined, let's go ahead in free card and try to draw uh, the thread for Terry. Okay. So once you start your free card, uh, you're always in the start uh, profile. Go ahead and change that to part design. Click on create new, create a body, uh, change to part design. Uh, click on create a parameterized a primitive. Uh, we are looking for a helix. There we go. Uh, 
we are going to start with a single start thread. So we are going to give this three as our pitch. And then we have uh, our height. Uh, this is just going to be the length of the rod. Uh, we shall be giving this 110. And then the radius of our thread is going to be seven. This is going to, this is the minor diameter. In the actual sense, we are going to draw an M10 uh, thread. Uh, the three millimeters are going to come from the tooth. So if you add the three and the seven, uh, we shall be getting our uh, major diameter of 10 millimeters. Okay, so those are the three entries you need here. The pitch, the height, and the radius. So if we go back to uh, our thread uh, dimensions, the pitch so far uh, we have uh, as P, and that's the only thing we have pulled out from there, which is three. Okay, so uh, go ahead and click on create and you see our helix has been created. I'll go ahead and click on close, change part to part design. Go ahead and click on create a sketch. Select XZ plane and click OK. And you should have something uh, like this show up. Now we're going to draw the profile of the tooth. Uh, click on the polyline tool, uh, come around here, and click there. Draw, don't mind about the dimensions. Just draw the profile of the tooth like that. And close it up. Okay. Now that we have the profile of the tooth uh, set up, let's go ahead and constrain it. Uh, we know this and this need to be equal. This and this also need to be uh, equal. Uh, our angle here has to be 60. Okay, so let's go back to the dimensions. Our angle is 60. So we have that uh, specified. And then we're going to specify our pitch. Our pitch has to be 3, uh, but we're not going to uh, put in 3. We're going to put it 2.9. We are going to leave at 0 0.1 millimeters. Uh, this is because of a limitation on free card. When you're creating solids and you have a sub, uh, sharp edges, uh, you don't get uh, a smooth uh, uh, surface. So if we leave those edges sharp, we're going, free card will actually throw in a lot of errors. So let's give that as uh, 2.9. Sorry. Uh, it has to be the vertical distance. So instead of 3, we are going to give it 2.9. Uh, we are leaving 0 0.1 to give room for free card to be able to create uh, the surface. This is, it will fill up that. So click that and we have that. Okay. Uh, horizontal constraint on here. Give it 0 0.5. And then we are going to create the minor diameter constraint so from that spot up to that spot has to be a seven and we already have our constraints uh, fully uh, constrained our object fully constrained now you may ask is this really three uh, millimeters let's click on that you can see it's three millimeters so the three plus the seven will give us the 10 millimeters which is the diameter for an M10 uh, screw. Okay, so we have that constraint. Go ahead and click on close. So the next thing we are going to do is we are going to create our thread by using a, uh, a sweep on the uh, helix. So click on the sweep tool. Uh, we have our sketch. Click on object. Click on the helix. Okay, change our orientation to uh, free net and leave constant leave transformation mode to constant and then click OK. You'll get a pop up. Click on create cross reference and click on OK. And there we, we go. 
we have our uh, single start thread as you can see or already defined but it's hollow so we need to fill in that with a cylinder so go ahead and click on the additive cylinder tool uh, give that 7.5 7 for the minor diameter and the 0 0.5 is that extra flat surface we created on the tooth that is going to go inside the cylinder and the height of our cylinder you can give it uh, 110 millimeters let's okay let's give it 100 100 millimeters and that's all you need on here and go ahead and click on OK. OK, so there we go. We have our cylinder. Maybe we should increase on the length of that cylinder. Let's give it 110 so we, it can come to the surface. OK. Hold on. Let's leave it at a hundred. Sorry. Okay. So, so we have our a single start thread. So we want to change this into a multi start thread. So we shall go back to our helix. Now, for a multi start thread, uh, the pitch is always uh, equal to, uh, you have to multiply it with the number of uh, helix you're going to have. So single start will be, for example, three. A double start for two helix will be uh, six. Uh, a triple start will be a nine. So in this case, we are going to change this to six. Okay, we shall change that to six. Leave the rest as it is and click OK. Okay, so we can see our cylinder. Let's increase the, our cylinder to 115. So it can go beyond uh, the limit of that. Okay, so after we have our cylinder, uh, we can see we are still having a single start thread and uh, we do not have uh, space for the second helical operation. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to click on your additive pipe, which is that, and then you're going to create a polar pattern. Okay, so under that polar pattern, we are going to change that to vertical. Wait and see. Uh, and uh, as a note, when you're dealing with helical operations, free card takes a lot of system resources. It, it doesn't necessarily take a lot of system resources, but I think uh, the computation it takes to, prof, uh, to actually operate uh, to create the helical profiles, actually slow it down. So uh, make sure you just, your machine is a little powerful and you'll be good. So now you see that we have uh, the second spiral. Uh, go ahead and click on OK. And by doing that, we have our mount start thread. So if we actually move it here, let's do this and we zoom in. You can see that we are having two helical operations. This is the first one, and this is the second one. So if we actually turn our thread this way, and we select, let's say, this face, you can see that it doesn't touch this. It just spirals, goes, goes, see that, goes up. And that's how we have our uh, multi start thread now this is for external external threads right so for internal threads what you are going to do is 
we are going to flip uh, the thread profile. So if you go back to our sketch, uh, this is what you need to do. Uh, let me first put back the helix. Since you, that will be good guidance. Hold on. As a question, when you're dealing with helix operation, free card is going to freeze. You just have to give it some time. So let's turn on that helix, go back to our sketch, and we zoom in. You can see that uh, our tooth was facing outside. That is for an external thread. For an internal thread, uh, you're going to just, the dimensions are going to be the same, but you're going to change your tooth to face inside. And once you do that, make sure this spot coincides with this path. So the distance from this spot to, once you flip this over, the distance from this spot to here has to be seven millimeters. And after you do that, you go ahead and run the same helical operation, and this will be internal facing. And there you have your internal uh, thread. So we can close that. Uh, you can see how uh, FreeCAD is uh, freezing uh, while I'm working on this. It's not that uh, my PC has uh, less memory or resources. It's just FreeCAD itself when it's working on helical operations. Uh, it's really slow and freezes. So you just have to give it time. Uh, you can see uh, it's the one consuming a lot of memory despite me trying to do a recording on OBS. You can see it's taking lots of it. And my machine, if you look at uh, the GPU, uh, I'm using a, a Radeon 7. It has 16 GB of memory. And if you look at the amount of memory I have, I have uh, 32 GB of memory, which should be good for free card, but it freezes when you're running helical operations. So I hope uh, this answers uh, Terry's question. Uh, you can always uh, change your dimension, but this is uh, how we draw uh, multi-start threads in FreeCAD. I hope this was helpful. Have a good evening. Bye for now.